May the words of my mouth, the thoughts and meditation of all our hearts be acceptable to God, who is our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. I really would like to respond to your warm welcome of applause by saying yes. <laughs> the girl from Montego Bay. <laughs> but apart from the girl from Montego Bay, there is another woman who also said yes, Mary. Mary said yes, and look at the revolution that she started. But no revolution today. The yes that I want to begin with is your yes. So thank you, Archbishop Justin. Thank you to the Crown Nomination Committee and Canterbury Diocese for saying yes to me. Without your yes, those of you who have traveled from Jamaica, Bermuda, the USA, France, Hackney, London, Parliament, and other parts of Britain, and of course, I must mention Canterbury Diocese, that journey would not have been possible today. And let me also say thank you to my family and friends for your support, your prayers, and your encouragement over the years. It is deeply appreciated. The prophet Isaiah speaks of a God who has knowledge of us before we were born, a God who has chosen us to be his messengers of good news and has given us a name. The giving of the name is important as it is meant to reflect something of the character of the messenger. In the New Testament reading, Jesus speaks of making known God's name. I have made your name known to those whom you gave me from the world. His name is his bond. You can trust him because you know what he is like. I'm reminded of the words of the psalmist, some trust in chariots, some in horses, but we will remember the name of the Lord, our God. And as the choir so brilliantly sang, Ja is my keeper, that was wicked. Thank you. <laughs> We will remember the name of the Lord our God. Such confidence in the name. The name that once was sacred and could not be spoken is now available to all. We have access to him through the coming of the Lord Jesus, Emmanuel, God with us. Another name carrying much meaning. God's presence in our midst changes the kind of relationship we have with him and with each other. This is at the heart of the good news message that we are called on to share. And Jesus captures it brilliantly in our New Testament reading because here we discover a kind of symbiotic relationship all mine are yours and yours are mine. We are deeply mistaken if the kind of relationship we seek with God is so personal and so private that we exclude our brothers and sisters around us, or indeed as we are in Kent on the frontier, if we exclude our brothers and sisters from another part of the world, what I call our brothers and sisters from another mother. 
I am reminded of the quote, I sought my soul, but my soul I could not see. I sought my God, but he eluded me. I sought my brother or sister, and I found all three. The name Emmanuel, which will be highlighted in the Christmas season, captures the kind of relational work that is at the heart of God's kingdom and which we are called to be engaged in. To do this kind of work, we must commit ourselves to working together and not apart, to build the body of Christ together, not to create many kingdoms according to the numerous labels that we appear to attach to ourselves. If we're going to experience that oneness of purpose that Jesus prayed for, then we will need to seek to be identified more with the name of Jesus. For too long, we have been embarrassed to be associated with him in public. We have kept him hidden in our beautiful churches and cathedrals that we visit on our terms for weddings, baptisms, funerals, or other such special occasions. But if we're going to ignite the communities from which we come, indeed, the county of Kent, then every one of us who profess the name of Jesus, we will need to reassess our relationship with that name. Think of the onset of social media, how quickly we adapted to it, how willing we are to capture images of things going on around us to share, places we have been to, food we have eaten, opinions we have, whether those opinions are requested or not. It is almost as though we have a compulsion to express the thoughts within. How might this translate with regards to the gospel? And I don't just mean filling up one another's inbox with endless scripture verses. This is about being present and engaged. How might we share with others in a very natural way what God is doing and has done in our lives? Choir, imagine leaving here and throughout this week, your friends and families hear you singing, Jah is my keeper. Just imagine. Just imagine that as you walk along, that wonderful sound that is your gift in music, but still giving the message of the good news of Jesus Christ. God is my keeper. Jah is my keeper. At the age of 14 years, I felt God's call on my life. At that time, there were no women in leadership roles behind the altar. We were there, though, as cleaners and tea makers, flower arrangers. But I knew that I was being called and naturally responded with the kind of yes that said, I will be faithful to your call, but will leave you to work out how it is going to happen. Four years later, I joined the church army. They had women in leadership roles. And 16 years after that, I was ordained as a deacon when the church responded to the Holy Spirit. And then another three years after that, when women were first allowed to be priests, I was ordained in Litchfield Cathedral. During that time, there was always that hunger to share Christ with others. You and I must go back to that place again of our first call, where we can feel that sense of hunger and be ready to share the message with others. Today is the Feast of St. Andrew, 
And here we find someone who, when he discovered Jesus, happily introduced him to others. This was an aha moment for him, so he shared it with his brother, Simon Peter. This is a good place to begin, to start with the people around us sharing our aha moments, those moments where we see the hand of God guiding us, protecting us, and doing something special in our lives. Like Andrew, let us be prepared to follow Jesus and of equal importance to say to someone else, we have found the Messiah. Come, come and see. Let the light of Christ shine in our lives so that others may catch a glimpse of the glory of God. But let us think what it might look like for us here in Kent if the name of Jesus enabled us to be a unifying body, that instead of focusing on the things that separates us, we focused on the things that we share in common. What if we were to discover that God, through Jesus, does indeed sneak out those great west doors and is right there in the community with us, urging us to think of his justice, his mercy, and his compassion for the whole world. What if we were to recognize his presence as we seek to ensure that the resources we have been blessed with it's not for amassing personal wealth, but to be shared in such a way that our brothers and sisters who have less than we can partake. This is the prayer for us. To be one is very real. At a time when we're struggling with the kind of party political discourse that seeks to separate us one from another, as the people of God, it is imperative that we stand in solidarity alongside those who are most vulnerable in our communities. And this should not simply be about increasing our food bank stations, but it should also be about challenging our policymakers, our political leaders at local and national level to create the kind of policies and take decisions and actions which will make our community flourish as a whole together. Today is a new chapter in our diocese, a new chapter too in my life. Let us commit to renewing our walk with Jesus that name above all names that calls us to unity. Let us recommit to consciously inviting Jesus as in the words of the spiritual, I want Jesus to walk with me. In my trials, Lord, walk with me. All along life's pilgrim's journey, Lord, I want Jesus to walk with me. He is ready to walk with us today. And so I invite us all to shed the cultural barriers that have locked him into a special box and so-called religious sites and enable the Spirit of God to change our lives so that we can in turn be changing others' lives through the message of the good news. Archbishop Justin, I look forward to working with you. I look forward to working with the cathedral chapter. I look forward to working with all the clergy in the diocese, all the lay people. I look forward to working with you to proclaim the message of the good news. So if you want to do that, then let's go. Let's be ready. Let's put aside anything else, any other isms, 
and let's be prepared to embark on this journey together. We are about to enter Advent, a season of hope for that which is yet to come. We look forward to that which is to come. Let us use the season of Advent to practice this walk with God everywhere we go. Nowhere shall be no-go areas for the Bishop of Dover in proclaiming, in proclaiming the good news of the kingdom of God. And nowhere should be no-go areas for all of us who profess faith in proclaiming through our lives, through our walk, through our whole being, the good news of God's kingdom. May God bless you and fill you all with real joy. Amen.